Hey, maybe for your mother's birthday you could make her a card or something. Oh yeah, maybe I could. Maybe I could bake a cake too. Or of your actual health. You Plus, in a situation a like that, 50 pots take longer to consume than a mini. So there's many more benefits to carrying a master stack of minis compared to just holding 250 shields. On to the next question. Question number two. In a build fight, what is the best material to build with? Wood, brick, or steel? Steel. This question is kind of tricky for those of you guys that are more casual players. You may not know that different materials have different amounts of health when placed. For example, while steel might have the most health altogether, it's the weakest type of material when you first place it down in a build fight. The reason for this is it only starts with 80 health, and it takes almost 20 seconds to reach its peak of 400 health. While wood may only have a max health of 200, half that of steel, its starting health is 100, and it only takes 5 seconds to completely build up to 200 health. Brick starts at 90 health, and takes 12 seconds to build up to 300 health. So basically, in a build fight, you're you're gonna want to use the material that has the most health starting out and What's generates health the fastest. The reason for this is so many submachine guns have big magazines, shoot very quickly, and a lot of people use them in multiplayer now. It's very easy to counter building by shooting out materials before they have the chance to build up. So even though the starting health of wood may be within 10 or 20 HP of the other two materials, it generates health a lot faster in addition to that, and the result of those two factors makes wood actually take a few extra shots of an SMG to take down in a build fight than metal or brick, thus making it way more effective. So if you picked wood, congratulations, mark a point. Question number three, what's the best utility to take high ground? Bounce pads, C4, or impulse grenades? So when someone gets the high ground on you, you basically have two options, take the high ground back, or make them come down to you. So realistically, between these three utilities, impulse grenades and bounce pads will be used to claim high ground, and C4 will be used to bring the enemy down to earth. However, depending on what the enemy is building with, how big the fight is, and how much material there is to knock out, using C4 to knock the enemy down won't always be the best option. So if you're gonna take the high ground, you gotta use the impulse grenades or the bounce pads. Between those two, bounce pads are gonna be the better bet in any situation. The biggest difference between the bounce pad and the impulse grenade is that the bounce pad, you don't risk taking fall damage. So if you're super high up in the air, and accidentally mess up with the impulse grenade, you're gonna fall and die. With bounce yeah. pads, there's no risk in falling to your death. Not to mention, if you do end up falling and you land on the ground, you won't take any health, and now you can knock out the structure and they'll fall to their death. So that makes bounce pads the overall best choice. Question number four, what ramp is better? The default ramp or the edited triangle ramp? If you answer the default ramp, Mark a point. I've seen a lot of players on console edit their pyramids to default work as ramps at the beginning of each game, so that if they want to build down from a build fight, they can have a default backwards ramp set. However, this is not a good idea. Maybe a few months ago this would have been a decent idea, but now there's bounce pads in the game and the need to use a triangle as a ramp to get out of a build fight, or just to have it in general, is a lot less practical now. It's much better to use the default triangle in case you end up in a tight spot where the enemy is shooting down at you and you need to go on the defense. Alright guys, it's challenge time and you only have 5 seconds to accomplish this challenge. Go down and smash that like button and subscribe to the channel right now and you will get five years of incredible luck trust me it works just try it now let's get back into the video question number five what's better the gold scar or gold famas Due to a couple of things that we'll get into in just a second here, the SCAR is actually the superior weapon. The first reason being that Fortnite operates on the Bloom game mechanics. If you aren't familiar with Bloom, I'll explain it to you. Basically in Fortnite, you have crosshairs, and wherever you're pointing your crosshairs at, your bullet might go. Basically the bullet could land anywhere within the crosshairs, but every shot is going to be random, and the more shots you consecutively shoot back to back, the more random they become. However in Fortnite, there is a first shot accuracy mechanic that is sort of used to counter Bloom. So if before you take a shot, you crouch and stay aimed down sights for a couple seconds, your bloom will disappear and the first shot accuracy of your gun will go exactly to where your crosshair is aiming. The reset time for the single shot, SCAR, is much shorter compared to the FAMAS. The reason for this is the FAMAS is a burst rifle assault rifle. So in general, it will be a little bit more accurate than the automatic assault rifle. Having such a long cooldown time for the single shot accuracy on the FAMAS forces you to put more bullets into the bloom system, which will make you less accurate. If you don't believe me, listen to what Myth has to say about it. When I use burst AR, I really dislike burst weapons. I think they're, I don't think they're as good as regular ARs or SCARs. I don't think they're as versatile. First shot accuracy is a blessing. The reset time on a regular AR compared to a burst AR or a FAMAS is like night and day. So I'm actually not a big fan of burst weapons anymore. I don't know, it's like there's already bloom and I'm not, I don't feel like putting more of my shots into the bloom system in my, like, that's the way I feel. And it's, and it's dumb because like th there's some days where you, you pick up these burst weapons and it's like, oh my God, I'm just like double headshotting everybody 
somebody. Oh, it's so good. Then there's some days where it's like, okay, not a hit, not a hit, not a hit, not a hit. And I just, I don't know. I don't like how iffy they are, I guess. Question number six. How many seconds does it take to consume a shield pot? The answer is it takes five seconds to consume a shield pot. Question number seven. In late game with limited inventory space, do you take health potions or shield potions? In late game, you're gonna wanna prioritize having shield potions in your inventory over having medkits advantages. The reason for this is that if you are simply holding shields, you can keep your actual HP from falling below 100 by always keeping your shield above your health. Just simply whenever you're getting hit, disengage from the enemy, Take a few shields and you'll be good. You can re-engage the fight, but you never lose any actual health. You just lose shield health. If you choose the meds over the shield, then at any point, the most health you can have is 100, making shields a lot more beneficial if you can properly disengage and consume them. Question number eight. What's the max damage a pump shotgun can do? Unfortunately, the max damage a blue pump can do is 170 with a critical headshot. This means if someone has full health and shield, you cannot kill them with a one pump to the head. What do you guys think of the current state of the shotguns? I personally think they should be buffed. At least the pump shotgun and the heavy shotgun. A shotgun's supposed to be a bit overpowered in a sense, at least up close, and that's just not how it feels in this game. I see no reason why you shouldn't be able to one pump a player, especially if you have the highest ranked blue pump and you get a headshot with it. But regardless, that's not how it goes. I guess I just gotta deal with it for now. Question number nine, which sniper is the best to take down structures. Place to find materials. I'm sure a lot of you guys guessed yeah, Dusty Divot, but Wailing Woods is far superior by a long shot. It's literally a forest filled with tons of the strongest trees in the game. Plus, since it's far from the center of the map, it provides you the opportunity to go loot other places near it like Tomato Town. If you land at Dusty Divot, there's a good amount of trees to farm. However, you're gonna be right in the center of the map, which could leave you with less loot later on in the game. Question number 11, how much health do bandages give you? The answer is one bandage will give you 15 HP. Question number 12, how much damage will a clinger grenade do if it sticks directly on you? A clinger grenade will do 100 damage if stuck directly to someone, which is enough to down a player if they have no shield. Question number 13. How much HP does a cozy campfire give you? If you use a cozy campfire for the full time it is active, it will give you 50 HP. Which consumable on the map gives you 5 shield? The answer is mushrooms. They give players 5 shield per mushroom. Question number 15. Which SMG is better, the MP5 or the P90? Turns out that the P90 is superior to the MP5 in every which way. Not only does the P90 have a larger magazine and a faster fire rate, but it also does more damage than the MP5. However, depending on rarity, in some cases the MP5 may do more headshot damage, but overall the P90 is superior. Question number 16. How many shots are in a clip of an assault rifle? All assault rifles in Fortnite have a clip size of 30 rounds, except for the Thermal Assault Rifle. But the Thermal AR honestly doesn't feel like an AR to me. It fires so slow and is used in situations that no other AR is used in. It's kind of like a sniper, if anything. But regardless, every other AR than that has 30 shots, so if you answer 30, mark down a point. Question number 17. Which weapon can spawn in a supply drop? The Gold Scar is the only weapon out of this list that can spawn in a supply drop. Question number 18. Which shotgun is no longer in Fortnite? Gold Heavy, Grey Pump, or Blue Tack? Grey Pump, obviously. The answer is the Grey Pump. It was removed from Fortnite in Season 3. Alright guys, that concludes today's Fortnite test. There was a total of 18 questions, and in order to pass this test or be better than Ninja, you needed to get at least 17 out of the 18 questions right. If you're in that 14 to 16 range though, you're definitely pretty good, but if you score lower than 14, then you probably should go play some Fortnite and practice a bunch, and come back, retake the test in a week. Let me know in the comments below if you ended up being better than Ninja. Thank you guys so much for watching, it's been Exility. Have an amazing day guys, I'll catch you guys next one. I'm out. Peace.
Well, I suck. Alright, dog. 